good morning dear students today in this video we are going to see about lesson planning so planning is very essential in everything not only in teaching planning is very essential in all the aspects and uh, planning helps the teacher how to accomplish his teaching process in a well manner and also in an effective manner so lesson planning involves framing objectives and uh, arranging the subject matters and uh, selecting the method of teaching so these are the things which a teacher should plan before teaching okay so the teacher has to frame objective and arrange the subject matter and the teacher has to select which method i am going to teach this topic so these are the thing which a teacher should plan before teaching okay so let's see how we should frame the educational objectives for our class so for framing educational objective there are certain uh, things which we have to look after and we'll see what are those thing in this video so learning does not happen all of a sudden but uh, it take place gradually okay learning does not happen all of a sudden it takes place gradually and uh, it needs proper planning it needs proper planning without proper planning uh, the desirable changes cannot be brought out in the behavior of the children okay so we have to plan for bringing out some desirable changes so uh, in planning a lesson plan the first and foremost thing is framing the educational objectives framing the educational objectives so uh, b s bloom there is a educationist called b s bloom so he proposed a theory he proposed a theory for framing the educational objectives for preparing a lesson plan so before teaching we have to frame some objectives which we are going to achieve through our classroom through our class so for uh, for those objectives we have certain things which we have which we have to look after while framing the objectives so we cannot simply frame the objective before framing objective we have to see to certain things on which we have to frame the educational objectives okay in uh, 1956 benjamin bloom along with his uh, peer group he has categorized educational objectives uh, into taxonomy of educational objectives so this framework has been applied by generations of teachers and college instructors in their teaching so we teachers are following bloom's educational objectives for achieving our goal okay so bloom has classified educational objective on the basis of human behavior so he has classified the educational objectives on the basis of human behavior and uh, he has classified educational objectives into three areas called as domains okay so he has classified the educational objectives into three areas called as domain namely uh, uh, cognitive affective and psychomotor domain so we will see uh, what is those cognitive affective and psychomotor domain so bloom's taxonomy has been defined as it is a classification system used to define and distinguish different levels of human cognition that is thinking learning and understanding okay so this bloom's taxonomy is nothing but it is to differentiate the different levels of human cognition okay different level of human cognition that is thinking learning and understanding so we have to frame the objectives based on the students thinking learning and their understanding ability of the students so based on these criteria we have to frame objectives and uh, these criteria again has been uh, classified into cognitive affective and psychomotor and uh, what is the purpose of this bloom's taxonomy so the bloom's taxonomy helps the educators to inform or guide the development of assessment curriculum and instructional methods such as questioning strategies so there are uh, certain purposes of for uh, this bloom's taxonomy of educational objectives like uh, it is helpful to assess 
the learner as well as assess the educator and uh, it will be helpful for framing uh, curriculum framing the syllabus for the students and uh, it will be helpful for instructional method instructional method is nothing but the methodology of teaching so what method does the teacher is taking up to teach the students and uh, next one is questioning strategies so these are the purposes of uh, bloom's taxonomy of educational objectives so the three domains of learnings are cognitive affective and psychomotor domain so cognitive domain means it deals with mental skills so cognitive domain deals with the mental skills that is for example knowledge or something like that and affective domains deals with the feelings and emotional areas so okay so affective domains deals with the feelings or and or uh, emotional areas for example attitude of uh, somebody or self uh, uh, self knowledge of about an individual so uh, that those things comes under affective domain and uh, the last one is psychomotor domain it deals with the physical skills physical skills means that is like uh, uh, writing uh, drawing and uh, doing some works with the hand so that is something some physical skills for example an artist will be drawing wonderfully with his hand a mechanical a mechanic will be uh, doing some mechanical things with his hand likewise so that is psychomotor domain so you should frame objectives on all these kind of all these three domains so through which the students can develop their cognitive ability affective ability as well as psychomotor ability so all three three domains should be uh, given importance while framing the educational objectives the first domain is cognitive domain so the cognitive domains involves knowledge and the development of intellectual skill so when you choose cognitive domains to frame objective it should involve with the knowledge and the development of intellectual skills so intellectual skills means you can uh, make your you should make your students to think you should make your students to be creative so such kind of uh, uh, learning skills should be developed among your students by using the cognitive domain objectives okay and uh, this includes the recall or recognition of specific facts procedural patterns and concepts that serve in the development of intellectual abilities and skills there are six major categories of cognitive process starting from the simplest to the most complex so again uh, uh, this includes recognition or remembering the specific facts like uh, important dates uh, important places so like those specific facts and uh, patterns and concepts all these things should be recalled and recognized in our mind for the development of intellectual ability and skills so uh, objective should be based on these concepts okay and uh, this cognitive domain uh, has some six categories uh, from the simplest to the complex form uh, starting from knowledge knowledge is the simplest form of category knowledge comprehension application analysis synthesis and evaluation so we will see in detail about these six categories so the first one is knowledge so knowledge refers to the ability to recognize and recall learnt material or information and uh, it includes uh, um, knowledge of specific facts methods process principles generalizations theories etc so the students can uh, write uh, list out define with their knowledge so knowledge means some general knowledge is about some important facts methods process principles and generalizations and uh, some theories so knowledge is the basic thing which uh, a student should possess and uh, so you should frame objectives based on these things which through which they can uh, learn some fact methods process principles and generalizations next one is comprehension comprehension means it includes the ability to translate explain and interrupt so uh, after attaining a knowledge the next level is you have to comprehend the knowledge whatever you have received so you have to translate you have to explain you have to interrupt you have to do such things after getting a knowledge so comprehension means you have to come out with some uh, come out with some thing 
so you have to translate from whatever you have learnt or you have to explain from whatever you have done or you have to interrupt with whatever you have learnt and the next one is application and uh, it refers to the use of knowledge and understanding in a new or unfamiliar situations so after getting knowledge comprehension the next one is you have to make use of uh, the knowledge and understanding in a new or unfamiliarized situations the next one is analysis uh, analysis means uh, breaking down the materials or other parts of its elements etc so uh, analysis means breaking down of a communication into its uh, constituent element or parts and uh, students can distinguish classify relate and uh, provide some proper statement to the questions and uh, students can compare and separate from two different things uh, with the help of analysis uh. the next one is synthesis uh, it refers to the ability of putting together parts to form a meaningful whole sentence uh. and it it involves in uh, uniqueness originality and creative uh, behavior okay and uh, in this in this part in this category Uh, students originate integrate and uh, combine ideas into your product or uh, the students can create design invent uh, develop so these things will come under synthesis so and the last category is evaluation and uh, evaluation means judgments uh, judgments about judgment about the value of material and uh, methods some methods like that and uh, this evaluation is concerned with the value purpose method material etc okay students can judge recommend criticize and justify the next domain is affective domain so affective domain is nothing but it describe the way of people react emotionally and their ability to feel other living things or pain or joy and uh, affective objectives typically target the awareness and growth in attitudes emotions and feelings so affective domain deals with attitudes value interest and appreciation to be simple this domain deals with the feeling aspect of learning feeling aspect of learning and again uh, this domain has five categories Uh, starting from receiving responding valuing organizing and characterizing so we we'll see one by one so what is receiving so receiving is nothing but uh, the student is willing to provide his attention towards the topic so the student should be ready to receive whatever the teacher is telling the student should pay attention the student should uh, show some interest towards the topic so this kind of thing should be receive should be uh, should be dealt in the objective category and uh, you should make your students to receive the knowledge which you are going to provide and then next one is responding responding is nothing but uh, students respond to the uh, thing which they have learned in an interesting way and uh, they should be responding with some answers from their side so here the students actively participate in the learning process and not only attend attend something the students will also react in some way that they will be reacting in some way that is responding next is valuing valuing is nothing but the students attaches a value to an object uh, or to the piece of information the student associates a value or some values to the knowledge they have acquired the, the students will be uh, acquiring some knowledge in the class right so they will be relating those knowledge to this valuing category and next is organizing the students put together different values informations ideas and they will be uh, uh, organizing it into uh, the hierarchy level the students compass rates and elaborate whatever they have learned and they will be uh, organizing with the with the level of importance and next is categorization the student at this level tries to build abstract knowledge so in categorization uh, so after receiving responding valuing and organizing they will be categorizing something so this is what uh, this is uh, so like this they will be categorizing so for example uh, 
so if i am telling to you about one person you will be starting to receive it whatever information i am giving you will be starting to receive it and later you will be responding to those information and uh, after that you will be valuing those information after that you will be organizing those information and based on these four thing you will be categorizing who is that person and what is he about and uh, those categorization will be done in the end so after receiving responding valuing and organization later only you will be characterizing that particular person so this is what uh, uh, affective domain is about so the last one is psychomotor domain and uh, this psychomotor domain describes the ability to physically manipulate a tool or instrument like hand or a hammer and a psychomotor objective usually focus on change and development in behavior or skill and uh, bloom and his colleagues never created subcategories for this for this uh, psychomotor domain but there are subcategories like uh, imitation manipulation precision articulation and naturalization uh, which was proposed by uh, uh, dave his name is uh, dave uh, he proposed this five categories in 1968 like imitation manipulation precision articulation and naturalization uh, bloom and his colleagues never created subcategories for this skill okay and uh, educational implications of uh, bloom's taxonomy of educational objectives uh, bloom's taxonomy serves as the backbone of many teaching philosophies in particular those that learn more towards skills rather than content so this uh, taxonomy of educational objectives serves as the backbone so without these bloom's taxonomy many theories philosophies cannot be achieved without these objectives okay so this serves as a backbone for many teaching philosophies uh, and uh, for learning several skills and bloom's taxonomy can be used as a teaching tool to help balance assessment and evaluation questions in class assignments and text to ensure all orders of thinking with the students learning including aspects of information searching so his uh, this bloom's taxonomy of education objectives has lots of uh, educational implications and uh, so it will be helpful for uh, balance assessment and evaluation in the classroom and when you are providing assignment this you should give assignment based on this bloom's taxonomy and also it will be helpful in students learning aspects and uh, it will be helpful for uh, giving them some home assignments for searching some informations so many things so this bloom's taxonomy has lots of educational implications so without bloom's taxonomy we cannot uh, frame objectives frame instructional objectives for our classroom so for framing instructional objectives you should make use of this bloom's taxonomy and uh, based on this you have to frame objectives for our classroom so as i told you earlier learning does not happens so all of a sudden uh, it take place gradually with some effort from the teacher and uh, so it needs proper planning so when you are planning for teaching the first thing which you have to plan is you should plan for objectives so you should plan for objectives for bringing out desirable changes among our students okay for bringing out desirable changes you have to frame educational objectives and for framing educational objectives you have to frame based on the bloom's taxonomy of educational objectives so why because it deals with three domains cognitive affective and psychomotor and cognitive domain deals with the uh, intellectual aspect affective domains deals with the uh, feelings aspect and uh, psychomotor domain deals with the uh, physical aspect so manipulating things are okay so this is what bloom's taxonomy uh, based on this bloom's taxonomy of educational objectives you have to frame objectives for our classroom thank you